Okay, buona sifiwe. Praise the Lord. Um, so I was trying to type something and then I felt um, I should just talk about it. It's a little noisy where I am, but uh, hopefully the Lord will filter this noise. Um, obviously, you know, hardly ever do I do a video after church. Um, so I just, I just want to say something on behalf of the men and women of God, the real ones. Eh? I mean, nowadays I know there are all sorts. But I want to say on behalf of the real ones, I want to tell you something that they'll not tell you. When you're getting ready for a service, if you truly, truly love the Lord and um, you want to be used of God, it's, it's a very overwhelming uh, feeling when you're getting ready for the service. So as the service date arrives, um, no matter how many years you've ministered for, you'll be nervous and um, you'll be very desperate for God to use you. You'll be very aware of um, how badly people need to hear this message and um, very overwhelmed by that you're, you've been sent. Um, the, the bigger the message, the, the more nervous you're likely to get um, because you, you realize also that you will stand before God to give an account of what you did. You also know that God's going to send people. So that's very intimidating in terms of that people will come and very often you have only just that one shot to communicate to people. For example, on this message on altars, this week has been very, very hard for me. It's actually, I've struggled with just a feeling of being extremely drained, but also just very 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 overwhelmed and at some point i had to realize that um or the holy spirit helped me to realize that it's it was actually spiritual warfare and you know the issue of altars the issue of covenants the issues of uh surrounding who god is as a covenant god the issue of legal ground is is is, is pretty much everything when you're talking about the things of god yet so many people don't know anything about it and you know the lord is um was directing me on how to pray and i'm praying and and the lord is still telling me you do realize that covenants make people fall asleep in church you do realize that there are those who cannot still hear because of the same covenants because of the same altars they won't come to church they'll get confused they'll miss they'll oversleep and all that and all those are covenants that continue to speak and altars that continue to speak and i was even feeling even more inadequate and um as 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 i was speaking the lord was telling me you know you have to speak slower you have to you know let me really tell you what to say and how to speak and all that and you're like lord god you know just really really overwhelmed and um sobered up really sobered up by the realization that uh unless god comes through we have nothing to offer and unless god comes through we have nothing to give and unless god comes through no one will be changed no one will be transformed you know just such a heavy realization so that's before the service so there's a lot of praying involved there's a lot of fasting involved there's a lot of um introspection and realization that um we are inadequate we cannot i mean unless the holy spirit reaches people we cannot do anything so that's that's pre-service so very very overwhelming so very often you'll find that a lot of men and women of god you, if you try to joke with them before a service they are normally very serious very solemn um some can seem very snobbish depending on what um posture somebody takes and is misunderstood but really before service is not the time to go and see a man or woman of God, you know, and you know, you'll find a lot of people waiting for them saying, Oh, I have a problem. Please pray for me and all that. And before a service, really, um, they cannot, they cannot personally for me, I, 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 I would want to pray for somebody before a service, but I can't, I actually feel a Holy Spirit arrest of you know, even getting on Facebook and all that stuff, you know, answering phone calls, the Holy Spirit tells me do not because satan could use anything and all that and really you need to spare all your energy to deliver the word and to be sensitive and to be alert to know what god is saying so pre-service just stay away from men and women of god okay then there is during the service the glory of god moves very heavily um there are times when 
the man of God or woman of God will feel as though they are not communicating. There's nothing going on. Maybe they can't feel the glory of God. There are days, of course, you feel the glory of God very heavily. But it's very difficult to tell. And it's a very helpless situation to be at the pulpit ministering as much as we look like we are superman or superwoman because of the glory of God moving through us. But it's a very helpless thing. When you're in a church that doesn't say amen, doesn't say preach it, doesn't say hallelujah, glory to God, you don't even know if you're communicating. So by the way, it really helps. When you say preach it, when you say hallelujah, when you say Amen, glory to God and all that. It really helps. It's very encouraging for a man of God or woman of God. And I know there are times that the message is so heavy that you can't even talk <laughs> because you're super overwhelmed. But even nod, you know, it shows you're getting something. And please note that sometimes when you're preaching, there's somebody at the back, somebody at the front who's sleeping. So very, very overwhelming. Also, at the same time, as you listen to the Spirit of God, as the Lord deals with you as well, because a lot of times when you're ministering a message, in fact, every time when you're ministering a message, the Lord is hitting you triple. So as much as it looks like maybe we've got it right, we've got it all sorted and everything, any man or woman of God who's walking with God, when the Lord is especially rebuking, let me let you know very clearly that the Lord is dealing with them four times, five times what the Lord is dealing with you on. And at that moment, an image is flashing about my own life. An image is flashing about something I did, something I said that is contrary to what I'm preaching. And, um, you know, it's literally you are communicating, you know, uh, vertically. The Lord is speaking to you and you're speaking to the Lord. And then you're releasing uh, horizontally. But at the same time, the Lord is also working on you. So you're also going back with repentance. So it's, it's really crazy. I don't know how men do it, but as a woman. That's how I do it. I don't know if men are normally very focused. Actually, maybe I need to talk to the men of God in here. But it's very, very overwhelming also just knowing that those very words that you're using will be used um, to judge you and to deal with you. So if you're ministering on love, you know, the Lord will really deal with you and where you're at in terms of love. Um, if you're ministering on, on sin, whatever kind of sin, when you're ministering on anything where the Lord is rebuking, the Lord will deal with you. If you're a true man of God or woman of God, the thing that you do, but actually at some point you feel like stopping the service and just wailing before God because you realize how, how short you yourself falls. But also the Lord opens up his heart to you so you're able to see things the way God is showing them and it's extremely overwhelming and you're really really desperate for people to hear what God is saying and then you feel extremely limited by the realization that you're just human and unless the Lord does it you cannot make people I mean there are so many times I wish I could draw diagrams instead of preaching instead of using words I wish I could do animation to explain what God is saying and what God is feeling and and what God is saying and normally you're just this weeping prophet in the presence of God and just a lot of emotions and feelings going through us and you know um yeah so that's during the service and of course please remember the glory of god is moving and the glory of god is moving um the man of god or woman of god in spite of all those things there's also a feeling of being invincible by the way when you're ministering the glory of god is upon you very very heavily um you know you can lay hands on even the dead. There's a level of faith that the Lord gives you. There's an anointing that Lord, the Lord pours on you for the purpose of ministry. So when you're done, if your service is anything like our services, our service will normally um, begin at 10 o'clock and our services on average will run for four to five hours. That's a short service. A sozo session, um, as a minister, you will stand for even 10 hours. Okay, so there's remember there's the prison worship as well and everything. So by the time you're done as a minister, um, at least um, in a Pentecostal church, let me put it that way, you're moving with the Lord, moving in the glory of God. A service will take at least four hours, um, you know, to, to complete minimum on a short service. Now, when you're done and you pray over people and everything, and then you say the grace, the glory lifts. Literally, you actually suddenly feel your body. You are not feeling it before, but all of a sudden you feel hungry. You are not feeling hungry. All of a sudden you feel very exhausted. Um, I, I don't think exhaustion would be the word. I, I don't know. Just drained. You feel calm. But then you feel like you are poured out, like someone squeezed you and removed everything from you until there is absolutely nothing left in you. 
And you wouldn't understand that unless you have ministered um, and ministered under the anointing. You can minister theology, you can minister what you've Googled, but if you minister under the anointing, you cannot understand that kind of exhaustion. Worshippers may understand it as well. Uh, if you're a worship leader or you're in the worship team and you really normally give and the Lord, the glory of God moves in you, you would understand. But even then, remember at least you get to stop and the minister continues because you are praying and ministering to the Lord and then the minister continues. So when you're done and you say the last amen, Basically, the weakest moment for a minister of the gospel is at that very moment when the service has just ended. So um, I used to be told um, that, you know, a man of God, you know, does not, is not uh, available to pray, pray for people after the service. And I think, how selfish, how nasty, how snobbish. I would see them being whisked off and I'd be like, oh, come on, really, you know, and I'll say all those things. And... For the longest time, I would stay and minister, and by the time I would get home, I, I, I couldn't even talk. i completely exhausted, and, and I, I, there, there are times I, I sit in the car, and like right now, I'm actually just sitting in my car, and I can't, I can't get out of the car. I am so drained, I feel like something I don't even know. What, what description can you use? You feel like you are dragged around town, as in your body feels torn. You feel torn, you feel drained, you feel exhausted, your, 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 your limbs hurt, your, your body literally, it actually feels like something was tearing it. And, and I've come to understand this to be that our earthly vessels are too weak to bear the anointing of God. So when the glory of God moves very heavily through us, we need to be able to recuperate. And normally it is to be whisked off right after the service. And if it was possible to just sleep a little bit, that would be great. Just even a 30 minute nap or a one hour nap, but just nap, silence, you know, maybe it's just surrounded by some worship music, soft worship music. And you just sleep as maybe intercessors are praying around you, are surrounded by prayer, you're surrounded by love, you're surrounded by just a prayer cover. And and then, um, you know, so, so really after the service is not the time for people to come and tell you all their problems. It's not. We, we will nod, we will say yes and everything. But let me tell you, at that very moment, it's diminishing returns. You're barely getting anything out of me. Uh, but also at the same time, I'm just thinking, please, won't you let me rest? And one of the things that really frustrates me is how believers come. And they tell you, I know you're really tired. You've been on your feet, but... And then now they start telling you their issues. And I keep thinking, why can't you book an appointment during the week? You know, um, why can't you go to another intercessor? Why can't you go to another pastor? Why does it have to be the person who was preaching that has to minister to you at that very moment? And for me, I find it the most selfish thing about the church. It's the most selfish thing about the church. I've given everything. I have nothing left. But you still want me to give to you. I, I find it extremely selfish unless it's just a lack of understanding. And I said, let me do this video and hopefully, you know, it will be uploaded onto Facebook, uh, onto YouTube by one of our staff members, um, I hope. Um, and just say, guys, just let the vessel rest. Let the vessel rest. Let the vessel reload, check whether you can get an appointment during the course of the week or something another time, but just let the vessel rest and reload. They have nothing left to give. Seriously, they have nothing left to give. Even if I extend my hand on you and, and, and I pray, I, I pray just by faith. There is really nothing in terms of power. I have nothing to give. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. And you know the worst thing about that is if you continue to drain an empty vessel, a vessel that doesn't have much to give and you continue to drain it, what normally can happen is that they, act, they can actually get out of there and then the devil hits them. And at that moment, they're weak. There's nothing. There's nothing. It's like when uh, Samson's hair was shaved and there was nothing. He couldn't do a thing. Yeah. So let the vessel go and rest. Let the vessel rest. Let the vessel rest. Let the vessel rest. If you want that vessel to continue to give, if you want that vessel to continue to pour out the anointing, if you want that vessel to continue to be used by the Lord, let the vessel rest. And I think today for me was a learning lesson. It's actually the last time I want it on record. It's the last time I hang out around after church. It's the last time. I can't do it anymore. I won't. I I can't do it anymore. I mean, really. You know, and by the way, you will be kept for a whole two hours. We finished service at two o'clock. It's now five o'clock. I'm getting home now. I haven't stopped anywhere. Just ministering. And you're on your feet and you're standing and you're standing and you're standing. And 
you are completely drained. And when you get home to your family, it can actually break your home because it takes so many days to rest thereafter. So just this is just a message again, just saying, please let the vessels rest. I know we love men of God, we love women of God, but you can actually get an appointment during the course of the week if you go to that church and be able to rest. It is exhausting. And you can only know when you've gone through it. That's the unfortunate thing. I remember my son, after he'd done as someone, uh, he, I, I asked him, we, we went out for lunch and he was just sitting there looking very strange and asked him, hey, are you okay? And he said, mom, is, is this what you normally talk about? And he was like panting, he was, saying, he was talking like, mom, is this what you normally say? And I looked at him and I thought, oh my. And he hadn't like prayed over people or anything like that afterwards. He's a 17 year old. And I asked him, you feel it? Eh? And he said, yeah. Is it what you normally feel? I've never felt like this. And that's just it. It's a mix of, I think it's mostly because of the anointing flowing through us that the vessel can't take that kind of anointing. That the vessel actually, it's like it's been exposed to, I don't know. <laughs> it's an exposure that the Lord gives you and your body needs to recover after that kind of exposure. And, and it recovers through just silence, through just sleep and, and being in an atmosphere of prayer. Um, where people pray over the vessel and in churches where people get it they pull the man of God or woman of God away and they enter the prayer room and there are specific intercessors who minister uh, to the vessel thereafter so if you see me walking off in future I have nothing I have no problem with you I just need to rest yeah and I will go back to that because today I tried to hang around I tried to love on people and I I'm just not feeling okay I'm not feeling okay. I'm not feeling okay. I don't like how I'm feeling. I feel sick, actually. I'm actually feeling completely sick. I, I have no appetite and I'm just... This is not exhaustion. This is something else. So let the vessel rest, guys. Let the vessel rest. So that the vessel can be able to last a longer time and the Lord can be able to continue to use them. Let us stop the idolatry where we think that it's only this particular man of God or woman of God who can minister to us. That is actually idolatry. Our churches normally will have intercessors who will be available and they can pray over you and minister to you. So yeah, after, it's been several years of ministry. I've actually been ministering for how long? Wow. I've been ministering for 20, 24 years. And finally I've said, let me just say enough is enough, guys. Enough is enough. Let's let the vessel rest, okay? All right? Amen. Shalom. Now you know. Now you know. Please share the video. Um, I am hoping to put it on, on YouTube. And the thing is, for a man or woman of God, you're also dealing with the guilt of you love the people. You really want to pray for them. But you, you, you just don't have the strength. And unless you learn to pull out, you will not really go very far. You will probably get discouraged. Maybe a number of men and women of God who actually end up backsliding. It's probably because of that, that when you're empty, you continue to minister. How do you minister from an empty place? You need to refill so that you can be able to minister. Amen. Shalom. And by the way, we're trying to figure out, um, I've been asking the Lord, should we have services where we just sit and people come to us and, you know, we, you, you come and um, we pray over you? Because it seems like believers really have a need for a man and woman of God to pray for them. And by the way, there are some who are just chronic they are actually, every time that you hang around, there will be one or two people who every Sunday have problems, a lot of problems. I don't know if they look for them. But every single Sunday, there will be that one or those two or those three that have to come and give you a long story. And by the way, you feel like you're actually looking at them, but you're not seeing them, you're not quite hearing them, and you're just crying, God, give me strength, God, give me strength, God, give me strength. And everything in you is trying not to shout, shut up, it's not always about you, go away. Seriously, I've told you the truth that probably no minister of the gospel will ever tell you. And it's every vessel that allows the Lord to use them. Not the ones who are preaching false things, those ones, of course, they love it when you come, they love their idolatry and everything. But a lot of times I'm just thinking, man, 
let somebody else minister to you, please. I have nothing more to offer. Please allow me to go and rest and I shall be back. You know, just anything. Today I actually had to be just, I told two people, no. They said, please, 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 I know you're tired. I know you're, and I said, yes, I am. And I, I've had several people come and tell me this and no, now I'm going home. Enough is enough. It was four o'clock. I've been standing for two hours. And I just said, no, I'm going. I'm gone. I'm sorry. And I just said to the Lord, if they get offended, too bad, because it had been that way, that way, that way, for a whole two hours. Of now, now you know, sorry, you know, I know you're tired, but, I know you're tired, but, I know you're tired, but. So before you go to the man of God or the woman of God after the service, please let it truly, truly be that there's nobody else who can actually assist. But really, book an appointment if there's an issue, and during the week, let the man of God or woman of God minister to you. Other people are available. I know I am now belaboring the point, but I do need to emphasize it. There are other ministers who are available to minister. Just allow them to rest. And by the way, I've noticed it happens such that whoever it is who preaches, that's the person that the people want to go to. That, that one, that one who preached that day so that the anointing can, you know, that one. But there's nothing to give. There's nothing more to give. May we learn, and may we learn to care for the shepherd. Because at the end of the service, and just before the service, even during the service, you need to care for the shepherd. During the week, the shepherd will care for you. But please, on Sunday, or that day of ministry, please care for the shepherd. Okay? Now, wale wenye mkoko makanisa zenye, the shepherd can be preaching and choking and you're not even giving them water. Please, when the servant of God does not have water, just, just take to them some water. Yeah? Give them some water because the throat goes dry as you're ministering and you do need water um, close by, available um, for them to drink from. Yeah? Then at least, yeah. <laughs> Be sensitive, have tissues close by in case, you know, they need a tissue and all that. Be attentive, but also really the ministry team. Be Always be attentive. We thank God we have a beautiful ministry team that attends to, to everything, by the way. I bless the Lord. You know, there's someone who talked about how, um, you know, when King David um, longed for cool waters from Jerusalem. And even before he asked, a man had already run to Jerusalem and come back. You know, I'm still looking at that story and trying to figure out how did that man get those cool waters from Jerusalem in advance. Yeah, so, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Shalom. Resting now. Resting now. <laughs> Resting now. Shalom. Shalom. And then while I'm done, then you tell me that your pastor is resting on Monday, so I'm the one who should minister to you because your pastor is resting on Monday. Can you imagine those are the kind of calls I get? So I ask, okay, where do you fellowship? Uh, fellowship at this and this place. Why aren't you calling your pastor? It's Monday and my pastor is resting. So how am I not resting? But your pastor is resting. Yeah, let's, 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 I, I know we've been giving our tithes and offerings so much until we actually think we own the pastors, but come on people, let's be sensitive. Sawa, sawa. Love you guys. That's a rebuke right there. Amen. Shalom. Hi, everybody who's saying hi. <laughs> yeah, Sheila Toya, you get it. Yeah, rest, 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 rest. Somebody says an eye opener. Amen. Yeah, I sure have been hoping that, um, I've been hoping that it's just because guys don't know, because I'm like, wow, why would you? Yeah, okay. Sasawa, shalom, God bless you guys. Love you guys. We're praying and just asking God, how do we handle this, you know, the ministration bit. Um, the other thing, of course, we don't want to do is have an announcement that we have a ministration and you leave all your big churches to come to our little church to drain us and go then go back to your big churches. So we are also just asking God, how do we do this? I guess if we have ministration, we will not announce publicly. We will just announce it on uh, the Sozo in-house platform because uh, it will be ministration for Sozo members. Yeah, I like telling people Jesus didn't go to minister to John the Baptist disciples. Okay, and jo John the Baptist did not go to minister to Jesus' disciples. So this story of running to the man or woman of God when things are thick, but you stick to your church. I mean, if you're not comfortable with your pastor praying for you, why are you in that church? Move. Yeah, why in that church? Sawa guys. Shalom. Barikiweni sana. I love you guys. Nawapenda sana 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 sana. I'm speaking from a place where I am coming from love and really the feeling of being drained is out of love and just wanting to pour out and give everything that the Lord um, deposits in us. 
So may you receive it and may you understand and may, may this word help another minister of God who does not know what to say and does not know how to tell people and probably ends up in depression, probably ends up committing suicide, probably ends up hating people, but then you can end up being resentful, ends up being bitter, and of course a pastor's wife somewhere who keeps waiting for her husband, as people are just keeping her husband and keeping her husband and ignoring her as well, and maybe gossiping about her, and women throwing themselves at her husband. And by the way, you know, if there's anyone who suffers the most probably in the church, it's a pastor's wife. And pastors' spouses, really, generally, because even husbands really struggle. Where, I mean, when people are going for their lunches and all those things, and there, well, pastor is still ministering to people. So don't, don't allow for resentment, and let's care for one another. We we're supposed to love one another as children of God. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. Share, share, share the video. Amen.